All right, this week's episode of Magnify, we're joined by Steve Tabrizi, the broker owner, COO of Remax Hallmark. Um, Steve, if you want to kind of start off with, we just talked off air, um, you gave me a little intro about Remax Hallmark. Incredible statistics. You guys are the biggest franchise on the global market for Remax, right? Yes, we are. First of all, thank you very much for inviting me to your podcast. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, Yes, we are the largest independent franchise within the Remax network in a global market. We practice, uh, we primarily practice in Canada in a province or a state called Ontario. We have about okay. uh, 42 offices. We also recently moved and expand to US. So we had some presence in Boston as an investor group, but uh, now as a Hallmark brand. We expanded to the Southwest Florida. So about three months ago, we opened our office in Naples, Florida. We do roughly about $19 billion of the volume on annual basis, which transact to about 29,000 transactions. We have about 2,000 agents currently within our roster. Okay, wow. So yeah, I, I want to get into that a little bit later about how you manage having so many agents because that's quite a lot to uh, to deal with. But I kind of want to go and do your origin story, how you got into real estate, um, what you love about it, and we'll kind of take the conversation from there. My background, I've been doing this business for about 28 years. My background yeah. is uh, industrial logistic planning and feasibility study engineering. I worked for corporate uh, world for about three years, mostly telecommunication. But then uh, I decided uh, about 28 years ago that uh, really didn't want to uh, work for someone. Uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur uh, and uh, basically decided to uh, make the, what do you call it, um, um, take my license, take my license, be a real yeah. realtor. And, uh, and that's what I did. Uh, and, uh, uh, I became a realtor in 1995 and then practice, uh, as a single agent, as a team member, uh, for uh, about 12 years, I had a team of the about four or five agent, uh, supportive staff assistant. And then, uh, in 2006, uh, I just want to do something different. I got really bored being uh, mm -hmm. an agent, being in a team, a very successful team. Uh, yeah. we, were doing, we were doing about 91 transactions on an annual basis with a team of only three people. Uh, and at that time, average price in Toronto was $300,000. Right now, the average price in Toronto is about a million two. And then I decided to venture to brokerage. And yeah. started with my own office in 2006, 2007. Then I met my partner, my current partner, Ken and Debra. We are three partners at Remax Hallmark. Okay. And then uh, the rest is history. So I've been partner with Remax Hallmark now for 17 years. Oh, wow. Um, so I kind of want to touch on this. So I was reading on your site that you, you, you masterminded uh, two big acquisitions in 2016. What was it that kind of led you to do that? Was it a revenue thing or just you felt like in order to, to break into a market, you needed more of a footprint? What was the, the reasoning behind those acquisitions? And, and then how did you manage bringing on so many new agents at one time? Okay, real estate industry brokerage model, uh, very similar to any other business. Uh, you have two ways of the growth. You have an organic uh, yeah. way of the growth, uh, recruiting, and you have M&A. So we realized in 2016, we got either continue within our organic model, which worked quite nicely. Yeah. You had every year roughly about 10% net gain to 17% maximum net gain. But in order to really take it to the next level, M&A is the only solution. And if you look at any, any other business in the industry, even currently, it doesn't matter travel industry, uh, banks, hospitality, you see uh, the M&As are happening. Why the M&As yeah. are happening? 
two entities or three entities, they each, they look at what unique value they bring to the table. What we brought to the table, which we were very proud of it in 2016, and currently even we are proud of it, is the system of the operational that we perfected during the first, I would say, we've been in the business for 41 years, first 25 years. And we noticed that our operational mechanism was scalable. So we could scale it easily. At that time, we had about 600 agents. We could have 1,000 yeah. agents. And it's funny, we sat around the table with my partner, and we I never forget, in 2015, we said, wouldn't it be nice if we have 1,000 agents? And then when we got the letter from the Remax, I think it was about 2020, that we surpassed 1,000 mark, uh, and we look at each other. We just said, that's it. And basically, for us, it was, okay, it's just the beginning. And uh, as of today, to be exact, it's 2,037 agents in our network. Uh, and we, wow. we have done since 2009. We did M&A starting 2009. But the massive M&As that we have done since 2016 Total M and A since two thousand nine, we have done thirteen of them. But since two thousand sixteen, we have done seven of them. So, and M and A as small as sixty agent, as large as four hundred agents. Wow. Yeah. What kind of? Um, I want to talk about your leadership because it's. I came across you from another podcast, um, and you talked a little bit about it there, and I was really struck by your leadership style kind of matches my philosophy on leading. Um, but I want to kind of just go into the, the, the nitty gritty about the brokerage operations. What kind of um, systems have you put in place for so many agents so that you're, you're ensure? Cause I guess the, the, the danger is once you have so many agents on a roster, the level of service agent to agent can fluctuate, right? It can, it can, you can have a great experience or a not so great experience. How, what systems have you put in place to ensure that that doesn't happen, that it's consistent across the board? I always refer to a company as a family. I always believe, firmly believe in a family, in a, a household, yeah. there are parents, there are partners, that they lead their children, they, yeah. they set the example, they create a community, a culture, an environment that they can raise uh, great children, the children they become great talents. And that's a success story of every parent when they see their children walk on that aisle of the graduation and then the next journey in their life, getting a job and move on. Yeah. So I refer to that for for us, the most important part of our organization is leadership. I'm very focused driven regarding the quality of the leadership that we bring on board. Yeah. I do not like to refer to our leadership team as a broker manager or office manager. I like anybody comes for an interview, tell me, okay, I run in this office. I have the roles and responsibility of the broker manager, but I always look for a unique ability of that individual. Tell me what is your passion? What can you contribute to the whole ecosystem of the Remax Hallmark? And I have a gentleman who has been with me now about seven, eight years, John Derprez. He is, he loves technology. He took that leap of, can I lead the technology department? So he managed uh, one of the largest office of the of our system, but he also is the director of the tools and technology. So that caused for us to have a, a very robust leadership team rather than I start or with my partner micromanage so many other mm -hmm. people and we become every morning, okay, this is my idea, let's do it. No. We, the team really comes with the idea and we are a very agent centric company. Back to your question, well, I got top producer as high as $20 million GCI volume. And I have, um, I would call it average producer that does $150,000. Yeah. Uh, what we created, as, once you become an agent centric company and you're transparent, 
and you are candid and you are open to the conversation with your agent and you take their feedback. Our industry is a very interesting industry. You are in it. Sometimes you get a feedback from the agent and you basically scratch your head. You said, are you joking? Your request is unrealistic because everybody comes with their wish list from their own personal perspective. Yeah. No, we created a culture. We have a slogan. That's what we call it. We brand it all the time. We said we are Hallmark. And if you go through the social media, go through the uh, of our network, you see everybody is proud to wearing the pen of the we are Hallmark. Uh, so we always tell our agent, bring me an idea that your idea can benefit the entire company. It's not about you. It's not yeah. about your office. It's about everybody. And that has really caused us to create an environment to take it there. So leadership is first. Second, yes. the leadership got to believe in the value that they bring to the table and also the value that the agent they bring to the table. Our three pillars of our company or vision or mission statement, first one is start. We are in the building of the business, building of your business. And we tell the agent, he said, if you don't become productive, we don't become profitable. We want you to become productive. And how we make our agent productive, we have probably one of the best training and career development in the entire country. We have a, a whole team uh, that lead that department. I'm blessed to have someone. Uh, her name is Barbara Brindle. She's the VP of the career development. She has spent... Uh, years of the commitment and uh, knowledge into the our training and career de uh, development department. We have average about 16 to 18 training a month from mm -hmm. the from the top producer to uh, average producer, skill set, regulatory issues. We are constantly ahead of the market changes. So that's number two. So leadership training. Number three, agents. They have one unique ability, communicate, negotiate, and uh, basically provide a great customer service for their clients. So the rest, we provide those services. We have our toolbox of technology. I have about 207 staff that they process the back and the trade and everything. We are oh. completely paperless. Uh, so the agent, they don't have to worry about, oh my God, can I test this tool? Can I jump from the, this CRM to the other CRM? No. We leverage our size. We leverage our brand. And we go do every research for them. And we bring them a series of the product that we recommend to them based on their production. We have our own coaching company now. We coach uh, not only Hallmark agents, they're agents outside of the Hallmark too. Yeah. And the network, by default, when become successful, create market share. We are the number one market share in every neighborhood that we are. So that market share automatically, when my agents are sitting at the kitchen table with the consumers, they don't have to say, oh, I don't have a listing in your neighborhood. We are Hallmark. We have a listing in your neighborhood. They leverage the brand of the Remax, which is yeah. the number one market share in Canada and in many parts of the States. They leverage the Hallmark market share and the tools and the services that we provide. Uh, and then the loyalty level and the retention level by default goes up because yeah. why would you want to change your brokerage when you are comfortable, you're happy, you're successful? Success is the key. You make your agent successful and success is not measured by the amount of the money they make. I have an agent that they're very happy. They make $150,000 a year, year after year. I have an agent that makes... $5 million is not happy, wants to make $6 million, wants to make $7 yeah. million. That's fine. That's the life choices that they choose. And we are going to help them through those life choices. On that term success, what do you feel, you know, especially having so many agents in your stable, what have you seen? What, what traits, what habits of successful agents versus agents that don't get to where they want to get to or to where their ability should get them to? What, what kind of differences do you see in the two, two approaches? It's very simple. I coach that uh, on a constant basis. First is a mindset. Mindset. If you don't have the mindset, 
Uh, you can have all the tools. You can have be with every brand uh, that you think is the best, uh, but you don't have the mindset and you don't have the right attitude. It doesn't work. So I call I refer to it as AMC. You have you got to have a right attitude. Right attitude will bring you great mindset, and the mindset will bring you consistency. So you do, you you practice these three. Wake up every morning, irrelevant of the change of the market, up or down, irrelevant of the behavior of the buyers or seller. Uh, irrele- irrelevant of your obstacles, you just got to always have the attitude of the solution driven. And yeah. then the solution driven will give you that mindset. Okay. At the end of the tunnel, there is a light. I got to find that solution for my problem. Once you find that solution for your problem, then there is a consistency happen. Plus, then you look for the other avenues. Where do I want to practice my business? Do I want to practice my business with the brand that has a market share? Do I want to practice my business with the leadership that support me? Do I want to be with the brokers that provide me all these tools and services? Uh, many agents, they make the mistake of instead of asking from their brokerage, what can you do for me to make me successful? They look totally from a different requirement. What's your fee structures? Uh, do I get this discount? Do I get this service for free or that? My attitude with my agent is this. We're partner. You don't pay the right amount of contribution to the e- equation. I cannot provide you those services. Right. Uh, and if you don't firmly believe in this concept, then we can be friend, but we cannot be partner. Okay. I like that. I'm, I'm a big proponent of mindset. Um, so I'm very happy to hear you say that. Um, talking about kind of na- navigating downturn in market, um, what kind of changes have you made at Hallmark to to kind of get, a, not get around, but to, to deal with low inventory, these high rates that we're seeing? Anything you guys have done that, that has contributed to your continued success? Anything yeah. specific? Yeah. Real estate industry, I've been doing it for 28 years. If somebody would ask me today, is the real estate industry, there is there is a notion out there, coaches, they talk about it. Our real estate industry hasn't changed. That's absolutely BS. Real estate industry has changed a lot. Mm-hmm. And the real estate industry has evolved. What's the involvement happen? Technology is one aspect of it. How can we leverage the technology to streamline to get in front of the buyer and seller faster. Secondly, generational changes of the consumers, younger generation, different expectation from the realtor. Customer service has become the top of the line. Consumers are out there are 10 times more educated versus somebody who was buying a home in 80s or in 90s. So the changes for us in the shift of the market, we had the similar shift of the market in Canada, higher inventory, higher interest rate. We focus heavily on education. We, we, we basically went through a research of what the consumer's insight it is. What's the consumers they're expecting from their agent? And then we said, okay, now we know what the client wants out there. How can we equip our agent with the right tools with the right script, with the right formula to go to the battle zone. So, and talking about the mortgage, higher mortgage rate. Yes. How could you have those productive conversation with the clients, talk about the mortgage rate versus dropping the prices and end result, maybe it's totally different for the buyers of the today's market versus when it was a seller's market. So education, 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 and yeah. connection. So our theme of the 2024, we just finished a series of our business planning, or we call it 2024 blueprint for our agent. It was two words. Educate yourself so you are able to educate the consumers. And connection, 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 connection. The only thing is left from the old formula of the real estate industry from the 50 years ago today we are still in a human element contact business. Consumers, they are not looking at us anymore as a just a sales representative. They are looking at us as a, a probably I would call it real estate portfolio manager to tell them 
what's the best decision is for them to make it. That's why it has become complex. You need to really be educated, not only in real estate, in legal matter, in finance, in inspection, in construction aspect of it, in so many elements uh, that to your the buyers, they feel so confident or the seller, they feel so confident that they are with the right consultant. Yeah, I love that. If I'm a new agent walking in to Hallmark, what are the first two or three things you're telling me to do? Obviously, educate myself. Um, anything, anything other, other than that in terms of, you know, lead generation or database managing, what kind of the, are the most important actions that someone can take as a new agent to grow their business? We have a, we have a very specific program. It's called jump It's 30 session. Uh, every segment of it is 10 session. And the biggest message that we have for the new agent is very simple. Do not try to invent a wheel that you don't have no experience in it. Follow the instruction. Have the right attitude, right mindset. And I will tell every new agent, do not question coaches in the company. Do not question mentors in the company. 41 years of the experience of the success story is behind you. I beg you one thing. And they all said, what? I said, if the coach told you jump, you jump. You do not question. You question that, now you are not coachable. And then one of the important questions that I ask them before they sign a contract, if I have an opportunity sometimes to meet with my manager and meet the uh, new talent, and I said, are you coachable? And everybody is funny, uh, Paul. Everybody just said, yes, yes, I'm coachable. And I always say, no, 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 no. Look into my eyes. If I tell you jump today, would you jump? And it's amazing the success story of those people that follow instruction versus the story of the people that don't follow the instruction. Interesting. Um, I want to kind of talk about this a theme of some of the books I'm reading right now, and it's, you're a great person to ask this. Um, as a leader, making <clears throat> difficult decisions or difficult calls, and I imagine 2023 is maybe – provided that and maybe some other, you know, 2008, 2009, um, <clears throat> led to making some difficult decisions. What would you say is the biggest decision or the, the biggest conflict you've had to resolve as a COO, a, a, fi- a founder of a brokerage? Well, I think, I think one of the biggest and difficult situation for me was during the COVID. March of the uh, 2020, yeah. Yeah, March of the 2020 for us was the day that in our province in our state our governor basically announced shut down close go home yeah go home and i had to make a decision where is the future with my partner where is the future of this company nobody knew that we're going to come back in three months or two months or six weeks we basically everybody said okay we're done but we pivoted we pivoted so fast I'm sure you realize in the last five years, what we are doing right now with you, Zoom or virtual podcast, never was unheard of. Oh, are you kidding me? Okay, when when are I meeting you, Paul? Okay, what time? Handshake, this and that. We, back to my earlier comment, the most important element of our value proposition is training and coaching and mentorship. That's what the agent they want. And we said, okay, how can we pivot immediately online and get our agent from the scarcity attitude of the COVID? I can't touch this. I can't do this. My life is ruined. I have obligation. Get them engaged. So we did in 2020, we did probably close to about, uh, I would say, easily. Uh, at least about a hundred Zoom training uh, wow. a month, mm. a month, and we issued and never seen that many memos, that many email, personal email that we wrote to people that we have your back, relax, take it easy. And t- another tough decision was I had to let many of my staff on a temporary basis. Uh, go and I never forget some of them they told me they said we understand what are you doing but can you promise us one thing 
if we come back, if the company comes back, we can get our job back. And I'm happy to say that every single of those staff, they got their job back. And it was a temporary measure. But that was a tough decision. The toughest yeah. decision was the mind shift of my leadership team. I had to convince them uh, to make that executive decision. This is the new reality. This is what we're going to do. This is what we ha- we need to basically... And it, and it was tough because some of my leadership people, they were scared. They said they were scared about their safety, their health, uh, yeah. everything you can imagine. Uh, so I think that I think there is no such a thing as a tough decision if you really are honest and transparent with your team, with your agent, rather than hide behind the corporate curtain. Yeah, that's true. I, mm. I always tell people, I said, either you love me or you hate me. They said, why hate? I said, because I tell you the way it is. I'm black and white. I don't like sugarcoating. I don't. Mm-hmm. That's and if great. you, I also, uh, I always, I uh, always ask for permission and apologize in advance. Can I be honest with you? Can I tell you the truth? You promise me it won't inf- in- impact our friendship. And then I tell them the truth. So I have those tough conversation on a daily or weekly basis when some of my agents, they're not performing. They are mm-hmm. stuck. They are stuck in the negative mindset. They have personal issues. They have family issues. They have financial issues. My job and my leadership job is to get up, get them out of that l- locking effect. Yeah, no, I love that. I think transparency really is is key. And kind of along that theme, what would you say? I don't like the word mistake because I think a mistake is just an opportunity for a lesson, right? What What would you say one of the biggest lessons you've learned as a leader, as a, a broker in, in this industry? Uh, communication. Okay. Open, transparent communication. Do not, do not uh, uh, hide anything. Do not. Be very yeah. clear uh, what your vision is. Uh, be very clear that, yes, we run a business, we, but we, each of us, we have a role. Uh, and also, another big lesson that I have learned, and I never learned this, but my business partner, Ken McLaughlin, taught me that lesson almost 16, 17 years ago. Never allow yourself to be the prisoner of individual or people either on your corporate structure or as an agent to dictate uh, or to manage and deviate uh, you away from your core values. Broker owners, they have one massive weakness. We constantly think about, oh my God, if I lose this agent, what's going to happen to me? If I lose that agent, what's going to happen? Or team, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's a tough call. It's a tough decision. And the first thing that comes to your mind is the money aspect of it. But I've learned if we don't have the ability to replace people, so that we don't have no value proposition. If we don't have the ability to basically stand by what we believe in our company, then where is the value proposition of this company? So we don't just hire anybody. We don't. We don't. We truly want the people. I always tell people, I said, call me if you need help. Call me, tell me, support me through their challenges. Gladly, money-wise, anything you can imagine. But I want you to understand before you sign the paper and join Hallmark, are you 100% believe in Hallmark value proposition? Yeah. If you believe, we will have a nice journey. It's all about the journey. And also when people leave you, I don't get hurt. You know, hurt. I don't, I always said, you know what? We are a part of the journey. Great. You know what? If you would think the other side of the grass is greener, I support you. But also, Mm -hmm. I leave always with this element with them. The door is open. Go try it. Go try it. And if you want to come back, more than welcome to come back. Life is too short to burn bridges. That's very true. Um, I want to, before we wrap up, I just want to get your thoughts on, we talked a little bit about what Hallmark's plans for 2024 are, but where do you see the industry going in the next 12 to 18 months? Um, <clears throat> a lot of talk about the lawsuits and, and all that stuff. Maybe not, that may not actually apply up in Canada. Um, <clears throat> but where do, you, where do you see real estate going in the next 12 to 18 months? And what opportunities do you see? So 
the industry is divided to three style of the brokerage. <clears throat> Full service brokerages, very similar to us. And there is a huge group in the middle from all across of the different brands. Remax, EXP, Real, uh, Century 21, you name it. Every brand, every brand. Almost 85% of the industry, I, I refer to them as a pretender. Uh, they are broker owner at the helm of these companies or even a structure at the helm of these companies that they really are going to suffer in the next decade. Why? Be, and, and the third element before we go talk about the pretender are what, what I call it the discount brokerage or boutique brokerages, you know, 100%. Yeah. Uh, commission yours, and you just pay me this, parking license, everything of that. The 10% of the roster in U.S. or 20% of the roster in U.S. and Canada are transacting in the industry. 70, 80% are doing less than three or four transactions. The stats is the same in U.S., is the same in Canada. That yeah. 20% agent are demanding support and services. And that's the g next 10 years of our industry, you will see a shrinkage of the, the biggest group in the middle. Uh, and you will see a shrinkage of the roster of the realtor. Why? Variety of the reason. You know, premium probably will go higher than normal. Commission structure that in US now is under the question. Yeah. Should the buyer pays the commission to their agent? So the industry will get more complex and more complex than ever. And uh, agents, either they, will, they get out of the business, either they get shifted to boutique and discount brokerage, yeah. or they shift to the top gear. So the middle crowd is really on a danger zone. And with the brand, is the same thing with all the brand of the real estate industry. doesn't matter which brand. If they don't, evolve and they don't focus on two element consumers and agent consumers and agent consumers education and agent education the, the brands will suffer yeah. so that's uh, a lot of people ask me why have you after 40 years of still a stay between max i said at the moment at the current time Biggest market share, biggest consumers acknowledgement. I don't know 10 years from now what's going to happen. 10 years from now could be something different. That's why I think the next 10 years is very pivotal in our industry at how these three categories of the brokerages and brands are going to pivot. Okay. Um, listen, Steve, I know you've got to get to a meeting. I really, really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, running that brokerage over there. Where can people find you? Uh, learn more about your coaching, perhaps, or anything about the brokerage. Uh, uh, my email is very simple, steve at remaxhallmark.com, uh, or you can visit uh, our website, remaxhallmark.com. Uh, and if anybody needs to reach out to me on my cell phone, it's very simple. Area code 416 561 triple one nine one 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 uh and more than happy to share my insight uh, i firmly believe it uh, doesn't matter which brand you are which part of the world you are uh basically i would be more than happy to share my insight and support any colleague in the industry uh, why because collectively we can make a better changes and difference in our industry and one of the best things that happened during the covid was something called clubhouse I love Clubhouse. I'm constantly there. And in a Clubhouse, okay. you see everybody from a different brand, uh, from a different brands. So when you see people from a different brands, uh, and you learn from each other. And every brand, every agent, every city, every nuances uh, uh, brings a great uh, inside, great element to our practice. I have a lot of great friends in New Jersey. I think you are in New Jersey. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have a quite a few good friends in New Jersey. We mastermind. My advice also to your audience, if they're a realtor, is mastermind, 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 mastermind. Uh, because that's where you're going to see your growth. Uh, yeah. and learn from the people, learn from the people that they have done it, they tried it, 
some practice they failed, but then they figured it out. Don't try to invent the wheel. I love that. Um, like I said, been a real pleasure 